With the first half of the Turning Tides DLC delivering our latest batch of weapons to Battlefield 1, I'm now looking ahead to the final DLC called Apocalypse in anticipation of what DICE might be adding next. Now as I've said in previous videos, we don't really have any concrete information about this final DLC yet, and that's making me really excited. I'm kind of getting that feeling that I used to get with previous Battlefield games and their DLCs, not really knowing what's coming. We do know, however, it will be focused on bitterly contested land and will come with brutal tools and unique weapons. So I've collected together six potential weapons that could be coming to the Apocalypse DLC and most of them were in development or in testing during World War I but never made it to the front lines. In fact, I've mentioned all of them in the past during my videos at some point, but now with this final DLC, I think these six are extremely likely to make it in. So first of all, we're going to start off with perhaps the strangest of the six weapons. This is the Burton LMR, or the Light Machine Rifle. Now this was perfected during the war. The Burton LMR was intended to be used by aerial spotters, those are the passengers in planes flying over the battlefield, to fire and destroy enemy observation balloons. Now, its designer, Frank Burton, he adapted an existing cartridge to produce the 345 WSL and included a Spitzer bullet in the design. So that means it's got a, a pointed end rather than the rounded end that bullets used to have back during World War One. at least at the start anyway. By the end of World War One, most of them were Spitzer rounds. Now, this would pierce the outer material of the observation balloon. The rounds were also incendiary, so they would set fire to the balloons, which were full of of hydrogen and then they would just simply explode when they were hit. Now the weapon may have been intended for aerial use but it could also make a great ground weapon for infantry and I think that could go in the medic class. We saw the fully automatic Fedorov Avtomat added with the Russian DLC and I think the Burton LMR here could make a great partner to that weapon. It features a shoulder stock, so it was already adapted for ground use, and its rather distinctive dual magazine feeding system would make for a rather awesome looking reload animation. Not only that, but the weapon does not automatically switch to the second magazine when all of the rounds are spent in the first magazine. So the holder would need to pull back a locking latch to a position above the cycling of the bolt, moving the first magazine out of the way, and then they'd have to push the other magazine down into the firing position. So you'd have a weapon in Battlefield 1 that would have an entirely separate sort of intermediate magazine reload system. It's certainly a rare enough weapon as well, only one was ever made and it was never really submitted for any kind of trial. I think it would be perfect for the Apocalypse DLC as a unique weapon. Next up on the list, and this will be a weapon for the Assault class, this is the Becker Shotgun. It's a German creation and it comes with a fairly special adaptation that most other shotguns don't have. It's a revolver shotgun. Now, information is scarce regarding the development and the use of this weapon, but it is said to have been developed in the late 1910s and early 1920s. Again, that would make it a great fit for a more unusual weapon to be added to Battlefield 1. Around 100 of these shotguns were produced in total, and that makes it fairly rare, and it's unlikely the weapon would ever have reached the front lines during World War I. It holds five shells in the revolver, which are loaded through a port on the right-hand side of the receiver. When the gun is fired, all shells except the last one are ejected automatically, and the last needs to be popped out with an ejector rod. A similar weapon does exist in Battlefield 1, the Piper Revolving Carbine, which also features a revolver to load and fire the rounds, but we don't have a shotgun like that, and I think this could be a great addition to the game. Also, the Piper Revolving Carbine is a tanker pilot weapon, so it's not really seen all that much on the battlefield. This Becker shotgun would probably get used a lot more often. Now, weapon number three for the Apocalypse DLC is the Ross Rifle. 
This is one of two weapons in my list that isn't a prototype or wasn't in testing during the war. This was actually issued to frontline troops. Now, the reason I think this could play a part in the DLC is more because of what the DLC is supposed to be bringing in terms of locations. Remember that section of bitterly contested ground within the description? Well, there were many of those during World War I, and of course, some of those took place on the Western Front with Canadian soldiers. The Ross rifle was issued to those Canadian soldiers, and they fought under British control during the war, and as such, they fought alongside British and French soldiers at some of the biggest battles of World War I. We've got Passchendaele, the Somme, and Vimy Ridge. All of those battles, Canadian soldiers were present and they took part. And with the land they were fighting over being so valuable to the Allies and the Central Powers, I would be very surprised if DICE didn't include at least one of those three locations. The Ross rifle was famously one of the most accurate rifles used during World War I, and it featured a straight pull bolt system, just like the Gewehr M95. It was also infamous for getting dirty and jamming pretty frequently. It was one of the longest rifles being used as well, which didn't make it great for use in the trenches. Rather difficult to turn round with a rifle that's over a metre long in a very small trench. Interestingly, Francis Pega Magabo, the most effective sniper of the war, he used a Ross rifle. Weapon number four in the list, this one probably more controversial than others, is the Annihilator SMG. It might look familiar to you if you've ever used a Thompson SMG in World War II games before, and that's because the Annihilator was one of the prototype designs to run before the Thompson SMG became what it was. In fact, the Annihilator was just two days away from being shipped from the US where it had been designed to mainland Europe for trials and testing when World War I ended. Development of the weapon started in 1917, with John Thompson, its developer, having an idea of a fully automatic trench broom type weapon that only needed one man to operate it. At the time, machine guns needed two or more men to operate it fully, and not to mention, it was extremely heavy to move around. Now the Germans, they had a similar idea, and they developed the Bergmann MP18 submachine gun, and were already using it in the trenches. The Annihilator was America's answer. Considering how close it actually was to landing on European shores before World War I ended, I'm pretty sure that DICE could bend the date a little bit and include the Annihilator in the Apocalypse DLC. It would be pretty awesome to see what was the forerunner of the Thompson in another Battlefield game. Weapon number five in the list for the last DLC of Battlefield 1 is the Lewis Assault Phase Rifle. Now, developed as a potential solution to an American problem of not having a mobile machine gun, the Lewis Assault Phase was designed by the same person who designed the Lewis gun, Isaac Lewis. There's a lot of Lewises in here. Trench warfare needed to be broken out of the stalemate on the Western Front, and this weapon was Lewis's answer. Unfortunately, his design came in a little bit too late next to the Browning Automatic Rifle, or what you might know as the BAR, and the weapon was almost lost to history. That said, there are a few prototypes still in private collections around the world, and I think adding the Assault Phase into the Support class could be a very good move, considering it is quite similar to the BAR. That gun has dominated the selection for support players who want a lighter option when moving around the battlefield. The Masson never really caught on as much, so bringing in this weapon, which oddly looks like a G3 rifle, might mix things up a little bit. And lastly, weapon number six for the Apocalypse DLC, the M1917 Enfield Rifle. Now, despite popular opinion, this rifle was actually more populous on the Western Front among American troops in 1918 than the M1903 Springfield was, which was their standard issue rifle. About 75% of all American troops on the Western Front actually held an Enfield rifle instead of a Springfield rifle, and over 2 million of them were eventually produced. The Americans adapted the Patton 1914 Enfield rifle, which was a British rifle, to work with their standard 30-06 Springfield round. 
the Enfield had a big strong action that would suit the 30 6 round, so instead of trying to speed up production of 1903 Springfields, manufacturers Eddie Stone, Remington and Winchester, they simply retooled pattern 1914s. Now I know this isn't really a unique weapon as the Apocalypse DLC describes, but considering we have Americans in Battlefield 1, it would be nice to see some of them running about with their unofficial standard issue rifle, which as I've said, there was more of than their standard issue rifle. It was certainly more common than seeing a Springfield on the Western Front. So there are my six choices for the Apocalypse DLC, six weapons that I think have a good chance of making it in. I'm sure there are plenty more, however, out there that you guys are thinking of, and not to mention those brutal tools. That sounds like a lot of melee weapons to me. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section, and if you have any suggestions, please drop those down there as well. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.